In this video, we're gonna install the Sabret Rocket 4 Plus M.2 SSD, and we're also gonna use their uh, Rocket NVMe heatsink for desktop computers. Subscribe to the Linus Wilson channel. We give you the secrets to get the console that you want. So, I wanna thank Sabret for sending me this Rocket 4 Plus I think they wanted a, me to install it on my uh, PlayStation 5, but I already installed uh, a uh, M.2 internal drive on my uh, PlayStation 5, and I was already playing games on it. So I didn't want to, you know, move everything around and, and uh, delete things or change things. And I wasn't expecting them to send me this, uh, but... I do have a uh, Omen 30L PC over there, uh, on the screen at least, uh, and it it only comes came with one terabyte of SSD and two terabytes of HDD, and for the video applications that I use it for primarily, but I also use it for PC gaming, it's a 3080 with a, uh, a 10850K, Intel processor in it. Very nice machine. Comes with 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, I'll have a link to it in the description. Uh, but I could use some more SSD if I were building it myself and I definitely bought it for less than I could build it for because of the shortage of 3080 cards. Uh, I would have put at least two terabytes in but having four terabytes in plus the the, the original one terabyte is great. Now, the thing about the Rocket, or the thing about the, the Omen 30L that I have, their motherboard actually comes with a second M.2 SSD slot. Not all motherboards do, and I don't think it's a standard motherboard. I think it's it's a uh, HP specific motherboard. So, uh, otherwise I'd give you the stats on that. but. If you have uh, either a PCIe slot, you can get an adapter, or if you have another M.2, you could install another uh, M.2 SSD and not have to clone your uh, hard drive, which has Windows on it. Now, Severin makes some really cool stuff, uh, and I almost bought one of those when I thought I had to clone the drive and, and replace the one, but then I saw the secondary slot for the M.2, and I ended up getting this heat sink, which I purchased with my own money, um, to go with the Rocket 4 Plus because you definitely have to have a heat sink for one of these things because they get super hot. So the hottest part of the computer is typically going to be your, your M.2 SSD. So um, a nice big conductive heat sink like the Sabret Rocket NVMe heat sink, which you can use on other uh, other brands of SSD is also pretty cool. And I was really, I, I'll tell you right off, I was just really happy with how this looked. I, I really liked all the copper in it. And the other nice thing is it, it looks distinctive enough that you can tell, you know, that's the rocket and the other one is, is the uh, SSD that came with the computer. Now the Rocket 4 Plus is really fast, so you may want to replace, you know, if you were using this and you wanted to optimize your system as opposed to doing the easy route, which is what I did, uh, then you're gonna pro you you probably would want to clone the drive. And they do have USB adapters for these things, so you can clone it right onto this drive, so you don't have to do clone to one drive and to another. You could clone right onto this, but because I'm just putting this in the secondary slot, I went the easy route, uh, then I'm gonna end up with, you know, my boot drive is what came with the computer. And uh, then I'm gonna use this for storing videos and uh, pictures and all kinds of stuff that takes a long time to, to upload and download from your HDD, which is really slow. Uh, whereas I think I transferred all my video files from the SSD to the Rocket 4 Plus and it only took a few minutes. I didn't time it, but it was not, it was not very long, but that 
you know, in terms of those transfers from like the iPhone to the HDD, each one of those transfers took like 30 minutes. It was ridiculously long. So it, it and this was about, you know, five times the, the amount of stuff. So I think that this, this is gonna really make, you know, the, the video file transfers a lot quicker. Um, so uh, let's go uh, install the M.2 in the HP. We're gonna have to turn off the computer to do that. First thing you need to do is open up the, the door. Okay, so if you've got an Omen 30L, they've got a little button here. Okay, so uh, it comes just comes off, uh, but it maybe give you a little trouble like it gave me. And you just pop it out. And there we go. And then now we're inside the Omen 30L. So this is our SSD2 expansion slot. So the this motherboard for this model, the 30L, has an expansion slot. So you don't have to clone the drive. Uh, you don't have to replace your M.2. I'm gonna leave the M.2 that I have on there so I don't have to clone it. And I, because I don't have an immediate use for the other M.2. So we're just gonna do a dual drive setup, a dual M.2 SSD setup. So that'll give us five terabytes of M.2 SSD on this. So that's the boot drive. We are not gonna mess with the boot drive. We're gonna leave that in. Uh, if you're gonna replace that, you would want to, uh, you would want to clone it probably. And there's some actually pretty great solutions out there. Um, I think probably the coolest is if you, it, Sabrent has a, uh, and they're not paying me to say this, but uh, they have a uh, USB, adapter for the M.2 so you can use that to clone the drive. So I was about to do that and I canceled that when I realized I had a second M.2 slot on the motherboard. Another alternative that you could do is if you've got an, an extra PCI slot on the motherboard, you can, there are PCI M.2 adapters that you could use. I don't have that. I only have an extra uh, M.2 two slot i don't see extra pci slots that are easy to access for this but uh maybe i'm missing something i don't see it on on this particular motherboard here's an overview of the motherboard that's the 3080 there just underneath the 3080 that's the uh second m.2 slot and of course where it says omen there that's the the water cooled processor so black on black, we're gonna give you a bit more light. Uh, there's a very small screw down there. I'm not sure which one works better, if this, this fine point Phillips works or the the one that's for the M.2 heat sink. But there's just that screw. And it was, it was a little stiff to start out with. Okay, so you definitely want to read the manual uh, before you start putting together the heat sink. But now that we've got the the drive bay off, uh, we can put together the the heat sink and the M.2 SSD. This is a double sided M.2 SSD, so we're going to use the double sided instructions. And there did seem like there was plenty of room to install the double sided. So you want to check that you have room to install the heat sink on two sides. We're gonna put on the top, we just need to take off the the tape uh, for the thermal tape, the, the plastic for the thermal tape. We just, you know, wanna make sure that we're aligning the correct side, so the screw side to the screw side. Okay, and then we should be able to, there's uh, four screws that we should screw in and we'll need the, the screwdriver. Uh, if you get this really wrong, if you get this extra piece of uh, thermal tape that you could reapply with, and it's got two-sided, so it's got plastic on both sides, so you can adhesive on both sides. All right, so here's the screwdriver. 
And there's four little screws here. And this is just a really beefy, um, nice um, heat sink that Sabran has here. I mean, just looking at it, you got all this copper. It's very heavy. Uh, I think it's going to do a great job dissipating the heat. And, you know, you can only do this in a desktop setup. But here it is. You know, look how big that is. That's a big, beefy heat sink that should keep it pretty cool. And then in here, we've got one screw. Uh, if you don't have the screw for the motherboard, you can use this. For, that's for the screwing it down on the motherboard. All right, so we're gonna insert it in. And All together, we got it with this heat sink, the Rocket 4 Plus. And we're gonna see if we can just test it first and see how it fits in. So you want to get this in at a 30 degree angle here. Uh, and as you push it in, we're just kind of putting it in gently, just testing it out. Make sure we've got Take it slow. Uh, it came with this little bit of, it's kind of like a uh, cushion uh, for the base slot. So the base slot kind of sat on the cushion. You do have to take that off to put in the M.2. It was actually covering up the M.2, so you do have to take that off to put the second one in. Okay, there you go. You can see, uh, if, you, if you're really looking closely, that the gold lines up in the slot there, right? So we're gonna push it in gently. So we weren't quite at a 30 degree angle there, but it clicked in there. And then the next thing uh, is to screw in the screw. Okay, so uh, this seems solid here. Uh, it We don't want to over torque it, but it seems like it's not turning anymore. And uh, we move it around and it, it does, it seems like it's adhered to the board. Make sure you get this smoosh out that you use to ad adhere the, the screw to the screwdriver so you don't drop the screw. Um, and. I think we're ready just to turn it on. So I put back on the cover here. So I know some of you might prefer without the cover, it probably will cool a bit better, but get a bit more dust. We're gonna put the cover back on and we're gonna plug everything in. And this seemed to be booting up with the SSD inside. And now we're gonna configure the SSD. And it, recommends going to disk management. So there's this little spot here, unallocated, which you're supposed to right click. Let's see if we get, there we go. Disk two, there we go. Just need to scroll down. Unallocated, we're gonna right click. And then it says, uh, select new simple volume. And then the new simple volume wizard will open and click next. All right, so it's about four gigs or four terabytes, sorry. Um, and it's showing about 3.8 terabytes there. Leave the specified volume size as the maximum default value and click next and then uh, select driver letter and click next. So we're gonna call it drive E since we have a drive D already. Uh, in the format partition screen, decide the volume label. Uh, name you want to give the drive and click next. So do we, do we put All right, 
so it seems like they're all formatted NTFS. The format partition screen, decide on a volume label, doesn't ask me for that. Oh, it says new volume, volume label. All right, so we were, we'll call this the Savrant Rocket 4 plus 4TB. Seems like a good name. And then the drive is now formatted and ready for use once we uh, click next. And there we go, we got it all, and we hit finish. And there it is, it shows up. It says that we got 3.6 terabytes free on that drive. And our two terabyte hard drive showing 1.8 total. And then our one terabyte drive is only showing 950. So each one of these kind of loses, it seems like, uh, about 10%, something like that, of their space uh, when it's, it's on there. But that's great. So that's what we want for the Rocket 4 Plus, and we're done with that part of the installation.